First anatomic considerations are that the lungs receive blood from two systems, the bronchial arteries, which come off of the aorta, and the pulmonary arteries off of the right ventricle. So most of the blood to the lungs is from the pulmonary arteries. However, it's the bronchial arteries that play a role in this hemoptysis, okay? Non-bronchial systemic arteries can also contribute to hemoptysis because as I said, any of this, the conditions that are going on, they're gonna recruit blood from wherever they can. So right bronchial artery anatomy. 70% of the time, the right bronchial artery comes off of an intercostobronchial trunk off of the aorta. So the intercostobronchial trunk is a vessel off of the aorta. It usually is located between the superior end plate of T5 and the inferior end plate of T6. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's a trunk and there are two vessels that come off of it, the right bronchial artery and the first intercostal artery. So you can see that over here with these, the solid arrows. This is the first intercostal artery. Over here, we have the right bronchial artery. Uh, here's our trunk. Here's our catheter in place, okay? We can't see the, the uh, you know, vertebral bodies on here, but also classically, the right bronchial, the intercostal bronchial trunk comes off where the left main stem bronchus crosses the descending thoracic aorta. So I'm just saying this very clearly because I do think it is difficult to find these vessels sometimes and it is important to know these sort of um, landmarks to get yourself in the right area. Of course, uh, these vessels can arise in any way, shape or form, which is why the CTA is helpful, but it's good to know that if you are looking for the intercostal bronchial trunk, which gives rise to the first intercostal artery and the right bronchial artery, you should be looking between the superior end plate of T5 and the inferior end plate of T6, where the left main stem bronchus crosses the descending thoracic aorta. And I think this kind of image is very good at showing us exactly that. What about the left bronchial artery? It's a little more boring than the right. It usually just arises from the anterior aspect of the aorta. There are variants, of course. There can be a left intercostal bronchial trunk and also common trunk with the right bronchial artery. Those are the most usual variants. Here is another image of, uh, you know, I think we've all seen this at some point, it's not important to, of course, remember all the types, but just to know that, once again, 70% of the time, there's a single right bronchial artery off of the intercostal bronchial trunk. There can be two left bronchial arteries of separate origin, just one, um, you know, one left bronchial artery, and you can have a mixture of, you know, all those different types, one through four. Important thing to remember is that the most common type is that intercostal bronchial trunk off of the aorta between the, in the T5 and T6, the area where the left main stem bronchus crosses the descending aorta. Once again, just right bronchial artery comes off of the aorta. 70% uh, of the time it's from that trunk. Another 10% of the time, it's just a branch off of the aorta on its own, okay, a first order branch. What about the other 20%? I don't know if you're adding up to 100, but as you can tell, I definitely <laughs> spent a little time on that, which was a bit unnecessary, but you know, it's once again, in these, in these situations where it's hard to see where the anatomy is, it's good to kind of know your odds. So if you can't find the arteries there, where would they most likely be? Right bronchial artery can also come off of thoracic or abdominal branches of the aorta, aorta anywhere. Okay, the internal mammary, thyrocervical trunk, subclavian, pretty much about anywhere. And something that you'll see in some of the images later, the way that you can tell the difference between the aberrant bronchial arteries, that is the bronchial arteries that arise off of the aorta, not from an intercostal bronchial trunk, um, is because they they course along the central bronchi, okay? They course along where the bronchial arteries, you would expect them to course, sort of hug, hugging the bronchi, 
um, instead of other areas, um, other systemic blood supply. So we'll see some images and that should make that a bit clearer. So here are some of the variants. Here we have our, we have a common bronchial trunk or catheter into the aorta. There's our uh, uh, main stem bronchus right and left. And we can see this common trunk leading to the right and the left bronchial arteries. This is another common bronchial trunk, but if you'll notice, there is hypertrophy of this vessel and hyperemia of the pulmonary parenchyma. So here is our catheter going into this common trunk where we have the first intercostal artery coming off, the right bronchial, nice, uh, you know, curly Q there coming down, and then this left bronchial that is very irregular and was the cause of this person's um, hemoptysis. This is an uh, image just showing a left intercostal bronchial trunk, and we can see first intercostal artery, left bronchial artery coming off the same trunk from the aorta. So even further, here's a bronchial artery arising from the left thyrocervical trunk. Here's our catheter going all the way up there, okay? And our bronchial arteries coming, there's the right and then the left. So just to review that anatomy for a moment, we have our subclavian artery. The first branch is the common carotid. The second branch is the vertebral artery and the third is that thyrocervical trunk. You'll also notice that we have the internal thoracic, the internal mammary artery coming off of the subclavian there. So just a good thing to review a little bit of the um, vasculature in those regions because uh, these small arteries can be the answer in this situation um, when you are unable to find the bronchial arteries in the position expected. Here's just another view. Um, and we have here our, uh, the internal thoracic, here's our thyrocervical trunk, vertebral artery, the bronchial artery can come off the costocervical trunk pretty much anywhere along the, that, uh, that vessel tree. So back to this image of the thyrocervical trunk, the, the bronchial artery is coming off of it. So once again, here we are. You can see our clavicle is up here. We are definitely not coming off the aorta. We're all the way up here. This is the left thyrocervical trunk and it's giving rise to these hypertrophy to regular vessels on both sides. These are actually, in this patient, they were supplying hypervascular lesions in the right lower and the left upper lobes. And we can really see that, you know, that's exactly where these vessels are leading to and where the irregularities are. And as I had mentioned before, unlike a systemic vessel, unlike the, um, you know, this is, I mean, we can see that these aren't intercostals, but in a different situation where it might be a little more irregular or there's a little bit of a question, just remember, that the bronchial arteries will always extend along the course of the primary bronchi, no matter where they originate from. And so, you know, you can't really see our carina here, but we can all imagine, you know, that this is where these vessels are coursing along, not in any other systemic distribution. Um, this is another patient, 46 year old male who had hemoptysis, bronchial artery embo uh, embolization, the images taken, they showed a bunch of hypertrophied intercostal arteries, but they couldn't find um, a right bronchial artery. And they knew that the, the bleeding was from the right side. So actually they embolized a whole bunch of intercostal arteries, but the next, and hemoptysis stopped, but the next day massive hemoptysis recurred. So they repeated the angiography, selected the right internal mammary, and you can see here subclavian, the internal mammary, and you have your right bronchial artery coming off supplying the pulmonary uh, parenchyma and very irregular in appearance, like excess vessels. They're not that tortuous, but there definitely is, um, you know, a blush within them and they're not, they don't, they're not irregular in appearance. This artery was embolized and the patient had no recurrent hemoptysis for an entire year. So when do you suspect this variant anatomy? As we said, when either some people at, interrogate everything and they'll just do, um, you know, a bunch of aortograms. Really, you can do a very nice um, aortogram with your catheter up near the 
um, aortic arch. And you can often fill a lot of the intercostal arteries and see at least that. Um, some people say, you know, you should interrogate everything thoracic and abdominal off of the aorta and see if there's anything aberrant leading to the lungs. Um, but also if the patient, like in the prior case, has a technically successful bronchial artery embolization, but then continues to bleed, okay? So the one thing that we worry about uh, while we're performing this procedure, non-target embolization, like with any other embolization. However, here there's um, you know, always the chance of sending some beats um, into the spinal arteries. So we have to be very vigilant to um, be careful of that. So the anatomy of the spinal arteries. So the bronchial arteries and the intercostal arteries, they basically feed into the anterior spinal artery, the artery of Adamkowitz. So along all the vertebral levels, there's um, branches, once again, radiculomedullary branches off the bronchial and intercostal arteries, okay? You can see in the image over here, in the posterior intercostal, it branches, and this hairpin turn is our artery of Adamkowitz. So all we really need to know is the intercostal arteries and the bronchial arteries, they do, they can, at different levels, feed into this anterior spinal artery, which is of utmost importance. This hairpin appearance is very, very classic for the artery of Adamkowitz. It courses vertically over midline, directly over the spine. Another important thing to note during imaging, okay? We'll, I'll mention that again later. So non-target embolization of this artery can lead to transverse myelitis, aka paralysis. So the best thing to do in this situation, other than to understand that it's small radiculomedullary vessels coming off of the intercostals and the bronchial arteries that contribute to this anterior spinal artery, it's just to know what it looks like on imaging because it's a, it's a classic um, appearance. And if you are able to see it, um, we can avoid it obviously. So um, here we are. We've got our right bronchial artery. It does look irregular. There, here's some, you know, hyperemia. The vessels are hypertrophied and regular and a little bit tortuous. Here's our intercostal branches coming up, right? The intercostal bronchial trunk is where everything's coming off of. And you can see these little tiny branches feeding into our hairpin turn of the artery of Adamkowitz. Once again, just reviewing that anatomy, the anterior spinal artery coming up in that hairpin turn and it's, the vessels are coming from the intercostal arteries and the bronchial arteries, and they come together at different levels and form this artery. Another, uh, another quite a few more images, just to get your eyes used to how it looks. Here we are, we've got ourselves within the left bronchial artery, I'm assuming over here, and you can see this hairpin turn of the artery of Adamkowitz. Another image, I'm not sure if this is just an intercostal that was cannulated, but here we go again with that hairpin turn. Okay. Very nice image here of the artery of Adamkowitz, hairpin turn that we can, that your eyes can now, now are probably pretty used to. Um, looks like here we might have a common bronchial trunk and here's our artery of Adamkowitz coming up, making that hairpin turn directly over the vertebral bodies. Mm -hmm.